yes, the recording is started. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna start with like, I'm gonna explain about the concept of model United Nations, first of all, then I'm gonna, Hello, everyone. then I'm gonna discuss about like, Hello? Uh, yes. Is it, uh, am, I, am I audible for everyone? Am I audible for everyone? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, 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 very well. Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, guys, so how are we going to begin it? As I said, like, I'm going to start with the concept development, like, what is the idea behind of Model United Nations, of course, and then we'll move on to some basic rules and procedures, like, what we actually do in the Model United Nations. And then after, we have a special appearance from uh, UAE, actually, Her Excellency, uh, Madam Lara Rahal. She will be also telling us about the lessons, what we got from uh, COVID-19, or you can say the coronavirus, uh, after my session, okay? Uh, good evening, Madam. I can see that you are already here, okay? And then after that, we'll be inviting the CEO, of hard console to giving you some great tips and tactics about the marketing okay he's the best of this area he's the best man for it okay so without further i can see you buddy how are you doing <laughs> okay okay so without further delay let's we are all here for what it's okay thank you so much okay for everyone and i'm glad to be with you I will stop my mic huh? until you finish. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma I will invite you officially. Don't worry about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's begin. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I hope everyone can see it now. Okay, so, so the concept development session. Okay, so we're going to start with just a second. Okay. So let's start about my education career because it is always important that uh, I would say like it is your responsibility to make sure that whom you are being teach, whom you are being giving a facility, it is really, really important for someone to have a very, very good knowledge about particular topic or particular area. So that's why I'm gonna, uh, you can say, start giving an idea about myself, how did I start and we're gonna continue with that, okay? So I've started, of course, that I did my graduation in telecommunication networks from PFK from back, uh, Pakistan. I'm based, I'm actually born in Pakistan. I had some, uh, like some areas and you can say some years of the spent in UK, like my master's is actually, my post-graduation is in international relations from Middlesex University, London. Okay, and then I did specialized courses in good, uh, global diplomacy and uh, you can say diplomacy in modern world from University of London and another specialized course in public policy economics from University of Oxford. So this is my educational career, right? I know it's a bit tricky and it's a bit questionary. People may ask about, usually they usually ask me about that, like being an IT person, you change into the international relations and now more into the politics, diplomacy and model UN, SDGs and all those things. So uh, yeah, that's, that's another thing. We maybe discuss this in later on or to be in uh, another time. So let's uh, move on further, okay? So about my Model United Nation careers, okay? So I was started my Model United Nation career in 2009, earlier of 2009, which was uh, April actually. So I can still see people are still joining us, that's good. Okay, so, and uh, I was only Pakistani student actually in 2012, which was selected by the United Nations headquarters based in United, uh, based in New York, actually, USA. Uh, it was the first annual model United Nations workshop. So I'm actually being somehow certified by the United Nations who have the capability to organize, give the consultancy and give the ideas like how you can actually organize the model UN conferences, bearing in mind about the academics and the great uh, credible and the learning platform. Moving into that, 2012, I've been selected by the UN Geneva actually, Geneva House, okay. Uh, it was a Geneva International Model United Nation where I've been invited as a block representative or the trainer, okay, for OIC, Organization for Islamic Cooperation. 
and I've spent like one week over there and train around 65 delegates in Geneva International Model Year Nation Conference, which is held at Palace de Nation, Geneva, Switzerland. And then moving to that in 2018, because my career is still, is still going on, of course, almost like 11 years so far. Uh, in 2018, I've been awarded by the United Ambassadors, okay, as an exceptional model United Nation trainer or you can say as a model in our nation hall of famer actually from across the globe of uh, like secure about 3000 vote for it it was like a voting procedure for that and then moving into that the great achievements of my entire life so far okay apart from uh, you can say model in our nation has been uh, like recently last year 2019 uh, i've been awarded as a sheikh zaid peace award in fourth sheikh zaid peace conference which was held in 2019 september uh, in dubai actually and i'm thankful that her excellency madam lela was also a part of that conference actually and uh, eventually i've got a privilege to meet with her uh, in that conference okay so move into that uh, and now recently I've been nominated, I've been nominated as an advocate of the SDG4, which is promoting quality education, sustainable development goal. I've been nominated to be the advocate of, uh, of the humanitarian uh, award, or you can say it's, a, it's an organization based in Ghana. And there's awards going on known as humanitarian Ghana award. So I've been nominated as a SDG4, which is promoting uh, uh, you can say quality education of sustainable development goal number four. So the voting is going on for that. <laughs> okay, uh, just bear with me. I've just got a notification for that. Okay, yeah. So what I've discussed, I've just put it into some bit of a pictures to not to make yourself very bored. So let's have a quick pictures about that. So these are the picture from the United Nations headquarters back in 2012. I was quite young that time, of course. So, I mean, uh, ladies, uh, these ladies are actually from the UN Women. And you can see that I was asking a question during the session. And then I've been awarded a certificate uh, later on, on that. Uh, so, so these are pictures from the UN headquarters, actually. And uh, of course, the same couple of other ladies uh, from the UN Women, you can see the uh, Security Council room. And of course, a uh, person whom I'm shaking with the hand is actually the vice chairperson on, you can see on the left side, top left side, you can see the chairperson, vice chairperson of the Security Council actually. And then on the right side, uh, he is actually the person who was organizing everything. His name is Mr. Nasir. So he was from the United Nations a Public uh, Information Department, who was actually the main organizer of that particular workshop. And uh, yeah, uh, some other ladies from the UN Women side, okay. And the great one, uh, I've, I've got a privilege to stand at the UN uh, uh, DICE, actually, where usually the uh, representatives or actually the ambassador give the speeches of their respective country. So that's the biggest thing I would say. Okay, moving to that, after that, like uh, the things is going on, then I've been invited by the Roma MUN. And uh, this, this is basically, you can say, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Italy. And I was sitting beside with the Foreign Minister of Italy. You can see the ministry pictures. You can see like while giving address to the ministry and also uh, sitting beside with the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Italy. And uh, yes, I'm from office of Geneva, of course. And yeah, you can see my pictures and all those things. Uh, the reason for making these things is I'm going to come up with the conclusion later on about that. Like why I am showing actually this. It is about the impact. It is about like what I've been blessed with this model United Nation uh, feel actually. It will come later on. I'm going to tell you on that. Okay. Moving to that, yes, as a block representative, or you can see the trainer for the OIC, you can see that people that I've trained at the Geneva house, you can see I'm uh, standing beside them. And uh, this is actually the Hall of Fame certificate and my announcement as a Hall of Famer of the Model United Nation in 2018. Okay, and uh, this was a Sheikh Zaid Peace Award uh, last year, 2019. You can see that I've been awarded by uh, His Excellency uh, Sheikh Ubaid in, in Dubai last year. 
And uh, this is actually the humanitarian award uh, competition is going on. Actually, people are still voting for it. But meanwhile, just because of this COVID-19 issue, the voting is actually stopped at the moment. So I hope it will be started very soon. But uh, let's see how the thing is going on. So this was like my entire career so far. Without further delay, let's move on. Okay, so we're gonna start like, what is actually the United Nations? We're gonna start working on that. We're gonna read about like, what is United Nations, okay? So, the United Nations was actually founded in 1945, okay? It was after, uh, you can say, the failure of League of Nations, I would say that. Uh, sorry, just, just a second. I'm very sorry, guys. There was some issue that I was just having at the behind. I'm sorry. Uh, and in the meanwhile, some other people have joined me as well. Uh, okay, back to the session. So what we were actually, yes, we were discussing about the foundation of uh, the United Nations. It was found in 1945, okay, Murillay. Okay, and then just a second yes so currently at this stage there are 193 members across the globe or the members of the united nations okay and the main organ of the united nation is actually the general assembly the crown jewel the security council and then we have uh, icj international court of justice and then united nations secretariat okay and then move into yes the general assembly because we have a general assembly one of the organ and itself the general assembly have six different bodies as well six different bodies as well which is starting from disarmament and international security which is called the first general assembly DISAC. okay deals with the disarmament or you can say non or proliferation treaty, NPT actually, like nuclear free zones or CTBT like across the world, they, they create a binding like no using of, uh, you can say the nuclear weapons or unnecessary weapons, or you can say the weapon issues across the world. So this is the council who actually deals with the disarmament and international security. After that, we have an ECOFIN that is Economic and Financial Committee deals with all the economical, financial aspects from the perspective of the United Nations. And then we have a SOCOM, the third General Assembly known as Social, Humanitarian and Cultural Issues deals with all that, okay? And the fourth is Spatial, Political and Decolonization. The fourth General Assembly is SPACPOL, okay? 
And then the fifth one, which deals with the budgetary and the administrative, is Administration and Budgetary Committee of the Universal <laughs> Assembly. Fifth. And the last is the legal, which is called as the sixth committee, the legal committee of the United Nations uh, General Assembly, sixth. So these are actually the six major, you can say, the councils of the United Nations. And out of this six, we have the Security Council, which we have the permanent members, five permanent members, China, Russia, United States, France. And can anyone tell me what else? Can anyone tell me? The fifth one? Which one? Come on, guys, speak up. Which one? <laughs> China. 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 Okay, so I said China, China. France, USA, UK, Greece, UK, UK. Russia. Korea. Russia. Russia. Korea. Russia. 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 No, no, no. Korea. Korea. Russia. There are five, actually. There are five permanent. Okay. Korea. Five permanent members. These are the five members of the, of, you can say, of United Nations Security Council, actually. Okay. And uh, we have then 10 non-permanent, which usually you can say work for two years, non-permanent members. Okay. So let's move on further to our presentation. Okay. Now, moving into the model United Nations, like what is model United Nation? We talk about the United Nation, now let's talk about the model United Nation and slightly history of the MUNs, okay? So, this is uh, the brief, you can say, the definition, which is uh, actually construct by myself. So, let me read it quickly for you. It's model United Nation, or you can say the model UN or MUN is known as the simulation. It is called the simulation of the United Nations or academic activity in which student acts as a representative of their countries in simulation of a different UN committees, agencies such as conferences organized by high schools, colleges, universities, different NGOs, or anyone can, uh, you can say, organizes. There is no such, uh, certain, you can say, uh, people or you can say, uh, you need some proper licenses for that. No, anyone can, uh, because it's academic. It's an academic event, so anyone can join it properly, okay? So what we usually do is, of course, uh, they use, uh, most of them, NGOs, uh, not all of them, but some of them are actually work under the umbrella of United Nations because they are promoting the scripture, the statue of the United Nations. And then at the end of these conferences, the students are work and their performance, they analyze it, and they put the judges, they put the committee directors, okay, who actually analyze, who actually moderate the entire simulation. And then they will be appreciated, and then they'll be given an award as a diplomacy award, or you can see the best delegate award. So in short, it is called the simulation of United Nations. Whatever the United Nations does, okay, in model United Nations for the purpose of uh, academic, for the purpose of, uh, uh, you can say, to make understand the students about what the United Nations does. They usually create some different kind of uh, issues or you can say the crisis during the simulation. Okay, so just go to the background history of this model United Nations. It was actually the first started as the first model of League of Nations. When the United Nations was not formed, okay, so it was actually the model League of Nations, okay? So in 1920s, the League of Nations, the model of League of Nations, okay, before even United Nations, when there was a League of Nations, so there was like a bunch of students actually have created the model of League of Nations, which was in 1920, okay? And then after, um, yes. And then first model United Nations was actually, uh, you can say, organized by St. Lawrence University Model United Nations, okay, in 1949, actually, okay? And then later on, of course, the big pioneers is Harvard, National Model United Nations, Harvard Model United Nations, and so on. And then everyone does like that. But it was actually being created in between 1945 to 1949, actually, when the model United Nations being started. Okay. And today across the world, now almost I would say like 
everywhere right now is everyone is actually organizing this great, uh, great academic simulation across the globe. Okay. Then in 1987, actually, a uh, few American exchange students have founded a time in, in The Hague. Now, there's a bit of change of the rules and procedure. We have different rules and procedures in the United Nations. And then we have the rules and procedures for the model United Nations as well. But there's another, uh, you can say, organization or the board, eh, which is known as a time in. They have also the, uh, you can say, uh, some other, uh, you can say, uh, uh, rules and procedures, actually. They actually have the rules and procedures to follow some different model in our nation. Or but at the end of the day, the main agenda is actually to follow like what the United Nations is doing. They do model of it and help the international students and help especially the politics and uh, international or journalist, uh, journalism students to understand about the model in our nation. However, I'll come into the later about this thing that like why others will understand and why others is actually taking part in model nation. That's another thing I'm going to come into that. So uh, let's move into that. Uh, the main thing is the benefits. Uh, I'm sorry, someone is trying to speak up. Uh, just a second. Guys, please make it mute, whoever is it. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so what skills and benefit we get by attending the Model United Nations conferences? First is the most important is the diplomatic skills. Now think about one thing. Diplomatic skills, you need diplomatic skills every time like starting from your home affairs and then you jump out into the corporate professional affairs and so on. Diplomatic skills is really, really necessary in the current era, I would say that. So this diplomatic skills, you can actually learn what actually the diplomat diplomacy is and how you can get some great diplomatic skills from this model United Nations. And then negotiation skills. Now, Think about more professional and uh, corporate side. At this current uh, era, or you can say this generation, okay, don't you think that you need a negotiation skills in everywhere, every aspect? Again, starting from your whole home, you have to negotiate with your family, your parents, and then your office colleagues, with, with, your, with your clients, with your consume, uh, consumers, customers, whether, whether you are any consultant or whether you are, are the employer or the employee, you need a negotiation skills everywhere, actually. So that particular platform is actually teaches you what is negotiation skills. Okay, solution oriented. Well, you have to be a solution oriented. Like, uh, just let me give you one example of it. Like, uh, there's something what we call the emotional intelligence. Okay, that's your mindset. That your mind says about the emotional intelligence. In the emotional intelligence, you actually read about the bridge. the The major thing is is the consensus. So the consensus. In order to move to the consensus, you should have a good tactics. You should have the good learning of the skills of the solution oriented. So again. This model United Nation platform is actually teaches you about the solution oriented thinking. And then critical analysis, different situation in your uh, home affairs, or you can talk about your, uh, <clears throat> you can say uh, uh, your office affairs, your corporate, your professional critical analysis, or then after you can say more moving into the leadership skills, this is the key actually. You learn about the leadership skills uh, like every moment in, in these conferences, like how to lead your country, how to deal as a leader, how to, even, even you, I mean, most of them I can see are the youth members. So actually those youth members, uh, the major thing is actually uh, we as a youth advocates, and your countries, your government is actually need that youth should come forward. And when the youth should come forward, they should actually act as a great leader. So 
leadership skills, which is really important into that. Okay. And then time and management, how are you going to give the priorities? What is really important for you at this stage? What come next? What is, you have to prioritize that. So these simulations is actually helps you to understand and to give an idea like importance about the time management. And then teamwork. That is very, very key. I mean, in this globalizational world, or you can say in this era, where we have a huge globalization of you, or you can say if you read about the sustainable development goals, the goal number 17, which talks about the globalization, it's more about the teamwork actually. So this platform is actually teaches about the teamwork, like how you actually act as a team member, work within the team, or act as a leader, but again, pushing your team, helping your team, leading your team so these all are very much important onto that and the lobbying somehow lobbying or you can say the negotiation is a slightly same but lobbying is more advanced or more professional level that you you lobbying with the people like for instance you you get a great job in future i wish you could get it i pray for that okay and your company will say okay okay let's say okay forward you need to go to any XYZ country and you need to somehow negotiate with those clients. You have to somehow uh, show some good leadership skills and great lobbying skills in order to get that tender or that contract. So these lobbying skills are very, very important for you. Okay. And then moving into more writing skills, drafting drafting uh okay so i can see someone has raised a hand i'll get back to you who have actually raised a hand on the question sir bear with me let me just finish this and then i'll ask the questions okay if you do have a slide about the question and answering on that i will happily uh, love to uh, entertain the questions whatever you have but let me finish all these things because maybe your answer will be just after any of the slide so just have patience. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. So I was talking about the writing skills. The writing skills is very important right now. Writing is like drafting an email, drafting any letter, or like for any kind of a policy. If you are a good planner, if you are a good strategist, if you are having a responsibility to actually organize any kind of an event, so you actually start working on the blueprint. And for the blueprint, you should have a very strong writing skills in hand. So this model in High Nation platform is actually helps you to having a good writing skills. Okay. And then moving into communication skills. Okay. I was reading in a one great article and it was saying that the communication skill is actually no more as a skill, but it is actually somehow the major aspect of your life that you really need it in, in every aspect of your life. The so communication skill is the key for every aspect, whether, whether you're a student, whether you're undergraduate, whether you're a postgraduate, you're a professional, your employer, your employee, or, or your businesses, uh, businessman actually. A communication skill is the key for you to get the success, I would say that. That's my personal observation because I'm also a soft skill trainer. So I love actually this, simula uh, this communication skill. So again, this model United Nations field is actually, uh, I make you understand and give you a very, very great communication skills. Okay. And then debating skills like arguments, putting your point on top, again, the negotiation factor, making an argument in a, with a very respective way, of course, and then debate on that particular with a very proactive attitude. So these debating skills, you get it actually by attending great conferences. And then intellectual skills. Of course, you need to be a very much intellectual to be a good leader, to be a good good politician actually or you can say if if you are no don't want if you don't want to be a politician but actually to be a good leader okay you have to be a very much good intellectual or you can say a good employer a good businessman a good consultant or even a good human being 
you sh you, your personality is supposed to be a good and intellectual, I would say. Okay, moving into that presentation skills, how you present yourself, the way that you speak, the way you handling with the issues, the way you managing the things, the way you dress up actually, that really matters. Like you present something like if you are not presentable, how would you be able to actually present something that you have been supposed to be? So these presentation skills are very, very important. And again, this great platform is actually helps you to understand, to present yourself in any of the platform, I would say that. Okay. And then public speaking. Again, another core area. Now, think about like in this, in this generation, everyone thinks like that, oh, I'm a very good public speaker. I, I have a very good attitude to, to somehow control the crowd, to, to lead the crowd and to understand. And I don't have any fear about it. Somehow, I don't have a fear about to, to meeting with the people, whether I can, I can meet with uh, <clears throat> uh, President Trump, I can meet with, with President Obama, or I can meet with, with any of the higher authority, because those public speaking skills really helps you to maintain your great confidence building, actually. Okay, so, and then quick decision making. In your life, you analyze different circumstances, different situation, whether, whether you're doing your home affairs, whether you're dealing with your corporate affairs, your, your, whether you're dealing with any of the affairs, like your personal affairs, the quick decision making is really, really important according to the scenarios. So such simulations, such academic activities is actually really helps to make yourself to having a very quick decisions according to the scenarios and the circumstances, okay? And the last and the very important, uh, like from the writing skill side, it will really help you to drawing, uh, to draw some policies, drawing some good policies, constitution, frameworks, laws, terms and conditions, policies, or it could be like companies' policies, or it could be the project writing. Because if you talk about your being a student, you might face if you're the last year student or, or it could be like you're writing your thesis at the end of the day, you have to draw some policies some frameworks some thesis. So this platform really helps you to really, really work on to that. Okay. So these are the benefit and the skills. So actually these are, I would say about 16, but believe me in my 11 years of career, I actually not, actually somehow count how many conferences I have attended so far across the world. Okay. But I've traveled like about 25 countries more than somehow, but nearly about 25 to 28 in between. The biggest thing what actually I have learned that every single conference is a great experience is a great learning for me. And even though, even if I'm attending any, any conference these days, it's also a great learning for me actually. So you learn in every aspect of these conferences, okay? Moving into that, how actually it looks like, like during the simulation, how actually it looks like, okay? So you can analyze that this is like how the chairperson sits, okay? The chairperson, if you just have a look to the uh, recall, uh, you can say the definition, of course. The definition will say that you have been appointed the chairperson or the moderators actually who actually moderate or lead your session who actually help you to understand the rules and procedures and help you to run the committee and then delegates will be the participant they sit over here okay they sit like that they sit over here easily and they debate on the things okay and then the podium where on some occasion you have the podium like the rostrum where usually people stand and address to the council okay uh, on some occasion you do have that on on other occasion you don't if you don't have doesn't matter you just stand rise or you sit and you address to the council this is actually it works and this is actually you can see the runtime picture like people sit and they they are uh, like 
they show what they are actually they're representing because at the end of the day you're representing any of the country okay so you re represent any of the country and you, you uh, whatever you've been right like it's not about like my name is uh, Fawad okay so it's not like about someone will say okay Fawad speak about this issue no uh, like whatever the country I've been represented, what I've been allocated, I will be recalled and I will be acknowledged and I will be recognized with with that name. Okay. And people will raise their flags. There's another uh, picture. It will come later on and then it will show you how does it works. Okay. Let's move on further. Okay. So, so. Let's move on to the basic knowledge about the rules and procedure and actually the understanding. Understanding about that, like I've given you about counting of about 16 skills, like these are the major ones, but there are plenty of others. But on what occasion you actually understand, like, okay, I've earned, I've learned this skill from this activity. So there is like the rules and procedures of from this model United Nations, right? Uh, I'm not going to cover the entire one, but I'm going to give you a very important and the major rules and procedures and actually the knowledge that how actually you act during these conferences. Starting from what do you actually do? Because I've just divided into pre-conference, during the conference and the post-conference. So pre-conference, like when you get registered in these conferences, what situation and what knowledge you get and what sort of things you actually require to, to, be, uh, to get yourself prepared for these conferences, okay? So we first start like uh, the topic. You get to know the topic. For an example, one of the topic is right to development. Or you can say what is going on right now is there is a global pandemic that is COVID-19. It is one of the biggest issue right now under the hand of the WHO, the World Health Organization, which is actually the specialized agency of the United Nations. And even in, in at this stage, most of these model United Nations conferences actually uh, learning about and actually discussing and debating about this COVID-19 issue. So this is one of the topic. So you have been given a topic like, like for instance, if I registered myself for any of the conference, I should get to know, okay, this is the topic that I will be uh, working on that. I will be having to, to debate on that, this particular issue or its particular thing actually. Okay. I and then so, so you've been conference. allocated a country that, as I said, uh, as, as I just go, you can say, <clears throat> From, from my definition, you have been allocated uh, any country. Like for example, either you could be representing Pakistan, you could be representing Ghana, you could be representing Nigeria, UAE, etc., etc. Any of the country, any of the 193 uh, countries, or could be some of the observers. Okay, any of the country, you can either you can represent your home country, or either it could be any of the country. Okay. You've been allocated, you've been allotted. And then a council allocation. We read about previously about the six organs, okay? Or actually the council, the general assembly, okay? So it could be any of those six or it could be any of the specialized agencies of the United Nations that you will be allocated. Like, for example, okay, Fawad, uh, being a Fawad, I'm registered in one conference. I have to deal with the issue of uh, global pandemic, let's say COVID-19, okay? I will be representing Pakistan, being a delegate of Pakistan, and I will be sitting in the council known as WHO, World Health Organization. So in the WHO, I will be representing Pakistan, and I will be debating and dealing with the issue of COVID-19, the global pandemic. I hope you understand. So these are the things actually that you understand pre-conferences, okay? Moving about the study guide. <clears throat> okay, let me pause it right now. And let me ask, like, does anyone have any question? Because otherwise, maybe you guys get, get, can get confused about this. So let me just stop the stop uh, sharing right now and asking about the quick questions from you guys. Like, okay, 
So, does anyone have a question? I can see Umar Ibrahim. Yes, Umar, you have raised a hand. Yes, Umar, what is your question, my brother? Okay. Um, my question has to do with um, what we call the communication and the presentation skills. Sir. Can it be a standard someone who will have a good communication skills but cannot have a well or a presentable way of presenting that skills of communication? Okay. Let me give sorry, you a very good uh, I'm sorry. Did someone have asked something? Okay, guys, uh, apart from Umar, may I request for everyone to please mute your mic, okay? Please understand. Okay, moving to your question, uh, brother. Um, I'm going to give you my own example because at the end of the day, I am the life example of that. When I started in 2009, believe me, I have a very less presentation skills, communication skills. Even I didn't know like how to speak at the front of the people. Even I didn't know actually much that uh, like how to face the audience. There was a fear of audience. So by attending these conferences, when you are dealing with a bunch of people, how are you going to deal that? There is later of the stages of this uh, workshop I'm going to tell you, okay, where you will analyze like on what occasion, on what situation, which particular skills you get to know and you earn. That is the major thing. So by attending these conferences, you're actually having a very good presentation skills because it's a very formal conference. You're only allowed to wear the formal attire or your cultural attires. Like for an example, maybe, uh, I'm not sure, Omar, which country are you from? I guess you're from Nigeria or you're Ghana, sir. Omar, you're from Ghana, if I'm not wrong, sir. Uh, sorry, I cannot hear you. Your mic is mute. Yeah, Ghana, Ghana. Sir, so if, if you get a chance to, to represent a Ghana in these conferences, so you will be allowed to, to represent your cultural oh, dress yeah. or, or you can wear your only business attire or you can say uh, a business of suit. So, you know, these are the presentable. You cannot wear jeans, you cannot wear something very informal. So these kind of a conferences really helps you to having a very presentable attire to show the world like how presentable you are. And then during the debate, you have the quality of the time. You have a quality of, a, of you can say, chances to present something very good, like in a very professional way. Then you have a timing to speak when you have been allowed to speak on that. So on numerous occasions, you learn some different tactics about presentation, communication, or you can say negotiation and so on. I hope you have understand. Okay, anyone else? Yes, I can see Omar Ibrahim Abdi have raised a question. Yes, Omar. Yes, brother. Uh, yes, Omar, please ask a question. Yes, Umar, can you ask a question, please? Or shall we continue to our remaining uh, presentation? Sorry, Umar, I cannot hear you. Please unmute your mic. Yes. Yeah, I said we can continue with the presentation. Fair Whatever, enough. I will let you know. Yeah. Fair enough, sir. Uh, does anyone have any question, please? Uh, does anyone have any question at this stage or one? Okay, I guess let's. Okay, I can see two more participants have raised. Uh, yes, brother Babatun. Yes, brother. Please ask a question. Uh, anyhow, I guess. Uh, oh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't ask, I didn't, I didn't raise my hand. Oh, you didn't raise. I, I saw your hand. Anyhow, let's move on to uh, rest of these presentation side okay bear with me okay so we were at these things okay study guide now this is very important the study guide is actually the roadmap or understand the topic so let's recall what we have said the example being a fawad sorry no fawad being a representative of pakistan 
sitting in the council in WHO dealing with the issue of global pandemic that is COVID-19. Now, I will have been provided, okay, on most occasions, I've been provided a study guide or you can say the roadmap. In this study guide, okay, you have the knowledge about, you get actually, when you read it, you get a proper knowledge about to understand what is the entire topic is all about, okay? Let me give you a very good example. I have a one file for you guys. Okay, bear with me, I can do that file. Okay, there's a good example that I can just give you of this. Okay, so. Okay, so, so you can see this is one example of a study guide. Okay, it is not about the pandemic, like it is not about the COVID-19. It is about uh, some different issues. Just giving you the example of it. Like this is kind of a study guide, which is actually the Council of the United Nations Security Council. Okay, and you will get these kind of details about the introductions and everything, and these contents actually. So basically, in this, in this particular study guide, we had the issue about the situation in the Palestine occupied territories and Gaza Strip. Actually, more specify, it was about the issue of Israel-Palestine. So in the study guide, which helps you about all those uh, ins and outs, all those issues and everything, like about the history, a historical aspect, about the issue of the Ottoman Empire, War of Independence. Well, these all issues actually are relevant to the Israel-Palestine, okay? Because this particular study guide is actually about the issue of Israel-Palestine issue, okay? This was one of the conference which I had earlier uh, in my career, okay? Where I was chairing that. So I'm just giving you an example of the study guide. So in the study guide, you analyze all these. So it is actually the roadmap where you understand about all the uh, aspects, all the objects about the uh, critical analysis and aspect about all those issues, whatever you have. Like in the case of this study, guys, is the Israel-Palestine. So really when, I mean, with regards to the topic of Israel-Palestine, you have all those knowledge, all those perspective from, from the historical side, from what is going on currently and how you can see the issue as, as a member state, as a general, when you actually representing your country. So this is what we call the study guide, which is what we call the roadmap, okay? It is just like that, okay? The study guide, you understand, and then you have the letters, introductions, and the contents, the issue is all about, okay? I hope that understand. This is what we call the study guide. Moving into that, again, the study guide is actually the roadmap. Why this study guide has been given? Because it will help you to prepare yourself. It helps you to prepare for yourself during your conference, okay? So, move further, okay? So, now research. Research is very, very important in these conferences. Again, we are talking about the pre-conferences. The conference has not been started yet. So before conference, you have to take care about everything. You have to research about everything. How you can research, that is another thing. But on what thing you have to research? You have to research on the topic. What, real, what topic we were dealing? Again, the global pandemic, COVID-19. What country I was representing? Pakistan. Which council? WHO, okay? So you have to research according these things. And then research related to your country. Again, I was dealing with the issue of COVID-19. I was uh, representing Pakistan, okay? And then research on the solution sector, like being a Pakistani delegate, being a delegate in WHO, how as an international representative uh, sitting in the Model United Nations Committee, acting as a diplomat, I can deal this particular issue. So these are these, you can say, things which is really important for you to prepare yourself as a delegate before getting into any of the conference.
let's move on. Now come to during the conference. Again, it is just like the same. And you actually act like this area. See, can you see these flags everywhere? People raise those flags to get their recognitions. Again, if I am sitting in any of the committee, I will not be representing as a Fawad. I will be representing my member state, like for an example, as, as a Pakistan. So people understand, people get recognized with these kind of a flags that you represent. You raise your hand. Uh, actually, you raise your flags, actually. Okay, and then you get recognized into that. So this is how it actually works in the committees. Now, during conference, what actually happens? There are three major things that you need to understand. Okay, is the moderated caucus, unmoderated caucuses, and the documentations. Okay, so the moderated caucuses. What is moderate caucus and how to raise it? It is very, very important for you to understand it. Okay, again, I'm not going to tell all the rules and procedure because it's quite long. It's a very, very long to understand the entire rules and procedure about the model UN. However, I'm just giving you the three major aspects. The moderated caucus, it is called, the first is the subtopic. Now, how it is called as the subtopic. Now, if you remember, we are dealing with the topic of global pandemic, that is the COVID-19, okay? The subtopic is actually the group of topic, or you can say the different topic which comes under the umbrella of the major agenda. Now, for example, we are discussing with the global pandemic, right? Okay, so with the global pandemic, COVID-19, we have a topic, let's say, uh, the history of this topic, and the effective countries and uh, the medical situation, or you can say the antidose, or you can say there are different topics, okay, that comes under the COVID-19, like how the international community is dealing with this, how the United Nations or particularly WHO dealing with this, how the different countries is actually adopting any kind of uh, like uh, uh, somehow you can say uh, framework or the policy like such as lockdowning, such as self-isolation, such as different kind of steps. So you have to discuss all those subtopics under the major topic. The major topic is the global pandemic, okay? So moderated caucus is actually the subtopic. It's, it is not about like COVID-19. We do understand the COVID-19 is actually a big topic. There are different issues under those, those particular uh, COVID-19. But what are those issues? We will discuss in moderated caucus, which is known as the subtopic. And then moving into the time parameters. Now here you understand the time management. Every single subtopic have the limited time. Okay, you have the total time, you have the individual time. Now, for an example, we do have a topic is COVID-19. Understand? But uh, history of this COVID-19, it's not about like in the entire conference, we're just discussing and debating only the history of the topic. No, we have to discuss the different aspect. So every subtopic, like every moderated caucus, have the, in the, has the total time. For example, let's say we will be discussing about the 10 minutes of the total time and the individual time is actually every single member state like as i said i am representing pakistan definitely in my committee there will be other member states like usa like china like russia any of the member state from 193 country so those have the individual time have the limited time let's say 25 seconds 30 seconds 45 seconds you have the limited time so here you understand actually the time management, like in a limited time, how you can productively, credible, uh, with a very good credibility, with a very good research actually, present your case about the issue on hand, that is the global pandemic, okay? So, and then you have to raise such topic. It's, it is, I know you might not understand, this thing because it's a bit of advanced level but just to give you an idea about it like you you can't just to raise your hand 
You can't just to like uh, put your hand like, okay, I want to speak on that. No, just like the picture that I've showed before, okay, that you have to raise your country flag to get recognition on that particular issues. Okay, so it's, it's like a term like the delegate of, let's say in my case, the delegate of Pakistan would like to raise a moderate caucus to discuss the subtopic. What subtopic? I've just said to you, that is the history of this pandemic. Okay, history of this uh, COVID-19. So this is how actually it works. So this is what we call the major, one of the major aspects is moderated caucus and how you can raise it, okay? And then moving into that unmoderated caucus, the second and the most important thing, okay? In this moderate caucus, it is kind of a temporary break, like you will not allow to just to sit on your seat. You can start discussing with different people. You, you understand <clears throat> people, what they are saying and what is, <clears throat> okay, I can see someone is actually saying there is a prayer time. I guess uh, let's take a five minutes break, everyone for just to give them a prayer break. I guess it's okay. Uh, five minutes break. Okay, so let's have a quick five minutes break. I can just grab some water and then we'll continue in just about five minutes. Okay, we'll continue after five minutes. Okay, guys, we'll see you guys in the next Thank five you. minutes. No worries, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. it was fantastic. It was great, and I'm proud of you for what. Thank you, Your Excellency. Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency. Okay. See you soon. Yeah, see you in about next five minutes. Okay. It's great, honestly. Can I ask a question? Uh, let me just quickly grab a water bottle, and then meanwhile we'll discuss some questions. Okay, then we start the session. Okay. Then. Let me grab, uh, get some quick water. If you want, if you want, if I you want to ask question and you're busy, one of us can answer. Sure, sure, Our Excellency, you can do that. I'll just give a quick quick break for to take a quick water. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Hello. Omar. Omar. Okay, buddy, I'm here now. Yes, uh, let's have a quick questions. Yes, guys, you can ask questions, whatever. In the meanwhile, there's other of the people who can easily join us after the prayer. Yes, buddy, Umar, what is it? Hello, Ambassador, no. do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, go on. We have actually uh, yeah. two Umar. One is Umar Potential, and the second is Umar Ibrahim yeah. Abdi. <laughs> so he's asking yeah. the question. He means Umar Ibrahim Abdi from Somalia, Mogadishu. Masha'Allah, brother. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Nice meeting you too. Yes, yes. Are you Omar? Omar Potential? Where are you? Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Ghana. Yo, nice to meet you, brother. I'm from Somalia. Oh, okay. Nice meeting you too. Great, great. Okay. Uh, what did you understand for this summit? We have the people from Somalia. We are from Nigeria. We are from Ghana. I'm from Pakistan. We have a couple of other gentlemen from Pakistan. Some ladies are actually from Pakistan. And Her Excellency, Madam Lala, is from UAE. And who else from where? Come on, guys, tell us. We are from different countries. Okay, okay that's, that's very nice. I guess uh, I, can, I can see someone from my iPad. Uh, madam, I guess you're from uh, USA, if I'm not wrong. I'm sorry, your mic is uh, mute. Okay, okay, just a second. Husband's iPad. I'm Laura Higgins from the Hired Project USA. Uh, I am very sorry, ma'am. Can you repeat that again? Because your mic was mute. Can you repeat that again? Oh, just a moment here. It's okay to talk and hear you now. Okay, my, my name is Laura Higgins, and I'm from the USA, and I represent the Hired Project. Amazing. That's fine. That's, that's amazing. Nice meeting you, ma'am. Nice meeting you. Okay, who nice else? to meet you. Thank you very much. Pleasure to have you, ma'am. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So who else we have? Um, yeah, we are listening. Okay. This is um, I'm from Nigeria. Okay. Ms. We can't see your face. We can't see your face. <laughs> I'm not in a very convenient place. It's okay, it's okay, no problem. Okay, Miss. Uh, so, women, we don't want to show up. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> it depends. Never mind. There is no <laughs> any mental <laughs> Okay, Miss Ida. Uh, yes, ma'am, you have raised a hand. Please, is there any question? Okay, uh, I guess so. Let, let's move on. There is, uh, uh, Excellency Fawad, there is some people, uh, there is a noise near them. Uh, I'll, I'll so, uh, start, uh, that will you. affect your sound. That's system. fine, no problem, ma'am. Uh, thank you for letting me know. I'll just, I'll just mute all of them, don't worry. Okay, so now we will back to our session now. Okay, so back to this session. So what we were discussing about the unmoderated caucus, which is actually known as the temporary break. Now, reason why I say is the temporary break, because in that particular uh, motion, actually, you don't have any formal proceedings. You're actually in the conference, you're actually in the council, in the committee, but the, no particular procedure works on you. However, you cannot go outside of the committee. You cannot just take a break. Perhaps if there is a break, you can take excuse. There's some different thing. There's some different pounds, uh, I mean, permission to take the break. The reason why it says a temporary break, because uh, at that time, the, uh, you can say the formal proceedings it stops and it's a bit relaxation. But this is the right time where you understand you learn about the diplomacy, you learn about the lobbying, you learn about the critical analysis, you learn about who is your enemies, who is your allies. Like, uh, like being a delegate of Pakistan, I know everyone across the world is facing the 
can uh, sorry can can someone stop uh there just a second sad kahir and you kahir i'm sorry can you just mute your mic okay fair enough sorry okay so this is the really really good time for you to actually get a good chance to understand the lobbying negotiations and a good time who is your enemy who is your ally now why did i say like enemy and ally because uh you are actually acting as a representative of the member state now see in my case i am the representative of pakistan okay politically wise or you can say with the respective of the foreign relation foreign affairs i do have the enemies i do have those member states who actually goes against i don't want to uh, like uh, quote a name but understand the situation because you have to act as a diplomat you're actually act as uh, the member state of your country and actually you are representing your country so the thing is that you have to understand the foreign relations the foreign affairs of your country like who is in favor and who is against for whatsoever okay so in this particular temporary break in this unmoderated caucus you have a chance to work on different i like to discuss more things more freely you cannot just to stick or sit to your table your chair whatsoever wherever you are sitting actually okay and you uh, slightly going and uh, you can say talking with different countries about the if the about these uh, issues okay and then move forward about the time parameters you don't have any individual time parameters you have a total time like it's not about like this temporary break is for entire day you have uh, an appropriate time let's say about 20 minutes let's say about 15 minutes 10 minutes in this 10 15 20 minutes you have a chance to actually talk and interact with different people okay and then again it's just like the same way as i said the delegate of pakistan would like to raise an unmoderate caucus with the total time of let's say 20 minutes i know it's a bit of advanced tactics but just to get a slightly idea about it uh, to understand about like how situation and how things going on you will get to know about these all ideas okay so let's move on these are actually the nine rules before entering to the unmoderate caucus which is actually the temporary cess now these rules and whatever you have gained or whatever you have learned so far from this particular workshop you have to start comparing with the skills that i've mentioned the 16 skills the countable skills that i've mentioned earlier about like negotiations presentations leaderships uh, of our critical uh, analysis quick decision making you have to analyze and understand on what situation you get to know those skills during these conferences starting with plan in mind like when i've been allowed to okay move from my seat and speak with other people i should have a proper plan okay so this 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 country like in the case of pakistan okay my biggest ally is china biggest ally some good arab countries like saudi arabia uae and all those guys so i will try to go and negotiate and discuss with them okay guys this is a big issue we are allies we having we are having a very good relationships okay a foreign relationship a foreign boundaries relationship a good friendly relationship actually so we should have to work together on this so you have to plan all those things so now try to understand and try to recall all those skills that i did mention to you earlier that you manage to get these conferences okay and then identify your enemy okay now with respect from the government point of view from the geographical location somehow uh, every country have different enemies enemies you can say the allies or enemies okay you're friendly you're non friendly so you have to identify those people 
during the uh, committee session. Like in the United Nations, it is like if you talk about the USA, USA somehow, maybe on some occasion, like in the case of the human rights, do you think that the USA will somehow agree with China, somehow agree with Russia, somehow agree with the North Korea? Uh, maybe not. But on some occasion, USA can. So you have to identify who is in favor for you, who is having a very good relation, a friendly relation with you. So you have to understand all those things. Again, the critical analysis, the diplomatic skills, you have to keep recalling those skills. And this is the right time for you to understand all those things and to get to know those great skills during these all conferences. Moving to find your allies, of course, you have a very good uh, uh, countries like who are in favor for you, who actually acknowledges, who having a very good friendly relation, just as I said, like being a Pakistan, I do have a good relationship with China, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, different Arab countries, with the USA on some occasion, some different European countries. So you have to analyze. Again, you have to find out. Okay? And then look out for the neutrals. That is very important. Those countries who are actually neither against nor in favor. So you have to just go with them and talk with them. Okay, we, have a, we are having not any kind of a clashes, no problem. Let's work together. This is how actually you act as a leader. So this is the actually the time that you understand your good leadership quality and then by identifying your allies, some neutral countries, having plan in mind, you actually try to work as a team. You actually try to work on some different consensus or you can say, show some good leadership skills to leading the entire group or entire committee. Okay, so negotiations and lobbying, of course, again, in the Anmari Caucus, you are allowed to move from here and there, of course, and then you negotiate with the people, come and join the blog, discuss this issue and blah, 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 all those issues, of course, all those lobbying and everything, of course. So moving further, listen and don't interrupt. So I would say this is the best way to understand. People asking about like how to be a good presenter, again, in the communication skills, in the presentation skills, being an intellectual, those old keys that I did identify you before as a benefit and the skills, you, the main thing which is really common is actually to respecting others, is to listen others and don't interrupt when someone is speaking because you're respecting. So actually you're getting a good skills from these, these uh, conferences. I hope you're understanding and just try to recall all those are skills and try to compare the situations and the things what I'm telling you right now. And of course, the leading the block, lead the committee, lead, let's say, entire Muslim blogs, lead the entire European blogs, lead the African blog, lead the least developed countries, lead the entire island countries blog or whatsoever, whatever the blog, <coughs> G20, G24, whatsoever, NATO, whatever the blogs you have. So this is the time that you actually shows your good leadership skills, of course. And then provide solutions and framework. Now, this is how you analyze the solution oriented, the framework, the good writing skills, drafting a good resolutions, consensus of formal proceedings actually helps you to draft some good paper because it is not about like, all day you just debate and arguing and debating, debating, debating. No, you have to move actually towards the direction, towards the consensus, not just round, round, round circle. And that helps you to provide a good solutions, to drive a good solutions, and of course, to draw a proper framework or the protocol or the resolution actually. And act as a diplomat. It is very, very important in these conferences. You have to act as a diplomat. Again, you can't say someone, of course, that, that you, you're actually not respecting someone or you don't actually respect the point of view. You have to act as a diplomat. You have actually have to put 
the national interest of your country. That's how you actually call the diplomacy. So these are actually the nine rules for the second and the most important aspect of the model UN is the unmoderated caucus. And the documentations, of course. You work on the consensus, which is known as like, whatever you discuss, you have to put into the paper without any, in, uh, like, uh, like any formalities, without any kind of uh, structure, or could be somehow the grammar, all those things you put into a one rough paper, which is known as the working paper. Okay. Now that working paper will later on lead you towards the draft resolution. When it comes to the draft resolution, all the formal structures, all those procedures, whatever you have discussed, having two sides, the issues, the causes, the solutions of those issues, because without solutions, you cannot actually come up with this consensus because how, how it will be more productive. Like if you are dealing with one issue and you are just not actually uh, yeah. the consensus, of course it should have that. But then from that resolution, you need actually to the resolution paper. So this is actually the third and the most important aspect of this model United Nations is actually to having the draft resolution. Okay, so after when you end up with the conference, you have some other things that is the post conference known as socializing, of course, you meet with a good friends, you get to know, okay, someone is doing very good, very good things. Like I remember one thing, like at this stage, I had a one conference in 2011. I was representing Hong Kong country and people are still calling me, oh, Hong Kong, how are you? <laughs> of course, because they still remember not my actual name, but the country that I was representing in 2011. So this is how actually for socializing, you're having a good, uh, good friend, of course. And then new conferences, new summits, new workshops. Again, it really helps you to get to know again, keep attending those conferences, keep getting good knowledge, keep learning from these conferences. And then every conference is a great learning experience for you. As I said, even after having 11 years of expertise, I'm, and I'm getting a new knowledge, I'm getting a good learning aspect in different countries, uh, in, in, in traveling to different countries or in attending to different conferences. Okay, so this is the most important question I would say that before people get start questioning about like how being a person being a student being a professional this model united nation really helps me so the answer is and the live example is myself i am the live example of this model united nation having 11 years of career i've showed you earlier about how did i start my career every single thing like in 2009, I was just like a dumb, a shy person who actually don't know what to speak, how to speak and what to speak at the front of what. I was just a bit, bit like a shy every time. But today I have no issue to speak like thousands of people, any of the state of the members or whatsoever. I, I don't mind. Okay. And, and the beauty of this particular platform, I would say, doesn't matter which field professional are you either you are a doctor either you are uh, you can say a medical student either you are from uh, from the constructional side either from the training side either from even even from the politics side journalism or any of the field it doesn't matter which particular field you are this model united nation field have amazing things for you guys you have a great capability to understand by uh, attending these conferences you can actually get to know all the great expertise all great trainings that you actually need to do that like for an example don't you think being on a medical student actually you 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 need to be a good presenter being a person actually who uh, who are actually a consultant who actually deals with any constructional business working or signing up or filling up any tender or something like that 
don't you think that you need actually some good, uh, uh, you can say, a training skills, some good uh, negotiation skills? So whatever skills that I've provided you, those are actually the major 16, but there are plenty of other skills that you could have by attending this conference. Doesn't matter whether you are a doctor, whether you're an engineer or whatsoever. Like if you talk about the confidence building, don't you think being a doctor, being an engineer, you should have a proper confidence to lead your, uh, lead your team. Being, being a doctor, you're supposed to be a good leader in your, uh, like in, in your team, like when you're having a, a nursing staff, when you have a different administrative staff. So this particular model United Nations field, have, you, you have everything. You can have plenty of skills by attending in numerous occasion when you're attending these two days, three days, or let's say one week of conference. So this is how actually this particular is actually help you in your career. I would say that answer, I'm coming into the question answer, bear with me. So now it's time for asking the question and answer. Let me just, uh, well, I'm gonna ask you about question answer. Meanwhile, again, don't forget to subscribe. I have a channel known as Model UN for Skills, I mean for Skills, where you will get to know all those, you can say, uh, rules and procedures. How does these Model UN conferences actually have organizing and how to, you will get to know everything. So visit my YouTube channel, okay? You will get to know uh, about all those conferences in more practical way, the rules and procedure, more in deep, everything I've put into that. Okay, don't forget to subscribe it. Okay, and now uh, once again, I would say the thank you very much for the organizer, the heart consultant, MUN for Skills, International Institute for Human Development, and of course, the business gate. Okay, we are very, very thankful for to be like for you guys to actually help us to organize and together the great uh, people from around the world, of course, to be on this great platform. Okay, so that's all from this presentation. So uh, I'm just uh, moving into the question answer. Let's have a quick question answers, okay? And then we'll move into our another aspect of this particular uh, workshop. Okay, so let's start with the question answer. So you can raise your hand and then I'll give you the answer. Okay, so I can see the hand from, again, Mr. Babatun. Yes, brother. Ask a question, please. Thank you very much. You really, I really appreciate your... Sir. You are an Arab, better understanding of what... Well, but today, I think you need to position yourself very well. Uh, sir, I would, uh, yes, that's, that's, thank you very much, Umar, that you have came up with that. Well, I appreciate it if you just first introduce yourself and then we'll move to your question. Uh, I think there is a bad uh, from you, yeah. brother. I cannot hear you. But yeah, you can write it down. So I will see your question and then I'll try to answer you. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Ford. Uh, yes, yes, buddy. Please ask the question. Yeah, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Bapo. Uh, yes, yes, ask the question, please. Yes, my name is Abdul Khalid. Uh, I'm from Somali. Uh, my question said, uh, what is the main goal is of United Nations? Because you said United Nations was, in, the time was established for 1945. Uh, what the main goal is of United Nations? That's my first question. And second question is, what way for the United Nations make nation skills? What way for the immigration make the United Nations? Okay, uh, basically, uh, I'm not an official actually of the United Nations, I would say. Okay, however, let me give you my analysis. Particular okay. My analysis to this particular question and being a student of uh, politics actually, and the diplomacy and also the international relations. Uh, the perspective All right. is that in order to maintain the peace security, and of course, the war from entire world. 
and putting all those countries into one platform where every country have the right to speak about their rights to to solve their issues on this global platform that is the united so actually the perspective or you can say the platform of the united nation has been actually solved like if you go just back to 1945 or just go back why that the league of nations has failed because the league of nations was actually failed to stop the world war 2 that is the reason it was failed and then the united nations was came into being because the major aspect and the major area and the major phenomena or at that time according to me is actually in order to stop the war in order to stop the conflict in order to war all of the different countries and the civil wars from across the world and providing a one platform all those member states come the one right of vote having a right of vote to analyze to discuss all those issues that is the major perspective and the major is uh, you can say uh, somehow uh, status of the united nations you uh, sorry can you repeat your second question what was your second question sorry your your mic is mute buddy can you repeat your second question your mic is uh, still mute uh make can it up. yes i can okay, excuse me yes 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 you can hear me yes i can hear you go on yes. Oh thank you. Uh, my next question say what way what way for the United Nations make migration skills because you said some benefit skills that okay uh may I would say like everything have the two sides of a coin negative and positive well, personally yeah. personally speaking I have personally seen the United Nations doing a great job like uh WHO of course it's one of the special agency of the united nation and see what currently they are doing they they are helping the entire world to in order to fight different uh issues and also the current issue is the pandemic the the covid-19 issue it is WHO is actually leading from the front no doubt and helping different member states funding them providing and especially those countries that actually don't have a proper uh like resources those least developed countries developing countries under developing countries they are helping out to helping to fight against this pandemic so it is actually the united nations who is actually helping yes there is another side of the coin that there plenty of war is going on the rights of the different countries such as israel palestine such as in the case of the era the case of Iran in the case of uh, Syria in the case of Egypt there are plenty i'm not going to deep into that, but just find out the positive image of that they are actually doing a very good job in order to maintain peace in order to maintain all those actually activities in order to maintain the peace security and to save the world and to put forward the great scripture and the great image of the united nation that is a peace and security Hope the answer of your question. Yes. Uh, okay, next okay. question. I can see Ambassador Jasmine. Hello, my sister. Yes. Your question, please. Uh, Jasmine, you have raised a question. Can you hear me, Jasmine? Uh, I guess not. Okay. Let's move into the next one. Mohammed. Can you hear me? Oh uh, yes, I can hear you. Yes, Jasmine. Yes, Jasmine. Give your question. Hurry up, sister. Hi, everyone. Oh, David. Hi, everyone. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, yes. So my question is. That one um, I was on. Ah. One try me, but I'll make a measurement. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Apart from. Can everyone mute the mic. Uh. Yes, Jasmine. Please ask your question. Jasmine, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go on. Okay. Um, my question is, you talked about um being very diplomatic at uh 
a United Nations conference. So you are able to actually relate with other delegates respectfully. Yeah. Um, how do you balance someone who is an ambassador and is actually someone who has a blonde side and knows how to actually t- say the way it is? How do you switch to know when to be blunt and when to be extremely diplomatic, trying to pass out an okay. information without being disrespectful? Okay. In my point of view, first of all, I appreciate it. it's a nice question. Okay. In my opinion, there's only two word definition of diplomacy. That is called national interest. Or you can say a one word is national interest. When it comes to your country's right, when it comes to your country's national interest, you have to negotiate all those things. Again, that is the beauty of the diplomacy that actually teaches you about to respect everyone's point of view and understand what people think about. But let not forget the right of your people. Let not forget the national interest of your country because again, you are the ambassador, you are the diplomat of your country. So in the occasion, in numerous occasion, uh, you find out the situation where you actually have to negotiate with the situation and understand the scenario where you have to see the diplomatic relation with your country. You have to put the national interest of your country on top and then handle those issues. Like you, you can't say someone directly, okay, you are the main major problem. You are the issue. You are the major promoter of this X, Y, Z. No, it is really disrespecting because we have to act as a leader. We have to act as a diplomat. Exactly. Being a diplomat, exactly. you have to act as a good national interest promoter. Whatever is good for your country, whatever is good for the right of your nation, you have to put that front. Okay, and then your excellency it is final. Yes, yes, uh, excellency. Your excellency, forward. I want to add something. I'm sorry, and this uh, please, please, um, please. Okay, my name is Layla Rahal. I'm glad to be here with you. It's a pleasure and honor. I want just to say we are all human beings. The diplomacy is just a title which we use for politicians mostly to solve the problem of the nation and the countries. But we are all diplomats. Why? We are diplomats in Parallel diplomacy, it's called parallel diplomacy. When you travel to any country, you are ambassador of your country. When you're dealing with someone in conference, you are representing your country because your name, your passport, your personality is allowed into your country. So you are representing the nations and humanity. Before any title international or any diplomacy which has been built by the government, we are all ambassadors, humanitarian, first one. Second one, with our education, with our skill, with our behavior, we are diplomats. So there is two issues. When you're dealing with politicians, it's a different way. There is a rule, a regulation, and you have to follow that. But yeah. when you're dealing person to person, you are dealing with your title, with your name, with your parallel diplomacy. You have to protect first your country, but not being aggressive. You have to be humble, not arrogant, and represent yourself through your flag, your passport, your origin, with humble way. There is no difference, no discrimination, no religion in the diplomacy. There is only one thing, humanity and behavior. Thank you for this question, and sorry, really. It's okay, it's okay, yeah, Thank Can you. I add something more to it? Uh, yes, brother, you can do that. And then after, uh, we have to move yeah. to another session as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think once, once, once you become a leader, you need to create a room to tolerate everyone. In as much as you are going to be a hundred percent human being, people will still find lapses in whatever you do. So you need to create that room, accumulate whatever people will criticize about you, then you move on, bring your people together, then you push up, up, up to whatever you want. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Hello, all. Move on. Hello. Hello? Uh, okay, buddy. Yes.